So much better. All right. Let me Kyle. Put some, let me put some headphones on. <laughs> See if yeah. this works. Yeah. Plugging in. Don't you don't love doing this? Uh... Oh, yeah, we should we should have just tried to have gotten through that with the glitch. Oh, that could have been fun. It would have been like like some Morris code stuff, you know. That could have been, that could have been very interesting. So, Kyle, how are you feeling today? <laughs> <laughs> thumbs have you up, had a thumbs good, down. <laughs> have you had a good week? <laughs> 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 that could have been very entertaining. Honestly, it's good for me. Sometimes, <sighs> sometimes the things that I say are actually not meant to be heard, so it might be better <laughs> off that way. <laughs> that that uh, the well, I mean the the thing is, you were coming through loud and clear. It was uh, uh, it was that, it was it was me that was uh, the issue apparently. So that sounds dangerous. All right, doesn't it? <laughs> How you doing, man? Ah, doing all right, man. How about yourself? How about yourself? What's new in the four hundred seven? Well, I got to tell you, I'm actually wearing a sweater today because. Um, hey, look at you! And I look like I'm sweating because I just got out of the shower, but um, you know, nice. it's it's just a little shower. No, yeah, no, you know, no, no, no real sweat here. Ah, yeah. Well, I mean, you don't. I mean, you. I mean, I work hard, but you hardly work. So. You know. <laughs> I'll take it. I will take. <laughs> I will take that insult and and just put it in my pocket. <laughs> But there are no there are no pockets in this sweater because it's a full on sweater. This is not a hoodie. This is nice. not a fleece. This is not a leather jacket. This is look at, look at you. Man. Not You're a, going this is not on. a blazer. This is a sweater. Look at you. You're going full on sweater. Emily got know, a hold I, of you and was like, uh, bro, come on. <laughs> I got I got smacked a little bit. I got Will Smith and it was um, yeah, they said you put a sweater on this time. And I and I got one on. <laughs> I like it. Uh, like yeah i got a uh i got a i got a nice bl- uh apparently it's a, uh, i've been told it's a very bright uh blue uh sweatshirt and it uh is a uh made by a company called desant or desante or i don't know how to pronounce it but it's a company desante. Of, yeah it's a, funnily enough though it's a company out of japan so oh well now i know nothing <laughs> now i literally understand nothing in life uh, the crazy thing is it's like a, a, a I mean, like I had never heard of the, I had never heard of this clothing company until like, I don't know, two years ago. Um, and apparently, you know, the only reason I heard of it was because we get like this big box of, you know, just random clothing, uh, mm-hmm. from like our, our USA triathlon sponsors. Yeah. Um, and they had a bunch of the, like they had this big ass puffy jacket in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and someone was like, Desant, never heard of it. And so they go and look it up. Jacket retails for like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars more. What? Like, what the heck? And they just what? sent it to you? Yeah, that, like that's the kind of stuff that they they do. It's just weird. So, uh, but, but they make but they make really really comfy stuff. Um, I I you know I'm not a big puffy jacket person, <laughs> but uh, but I, I do love their uh, their their sweatshirts are are insanely comfortable. So I, I am uh, very I'm definitely known to uh, I've got like three or four of these Desant sweatshirts that they've sent me over the years because Lord knows I'm not paying a few hundred bucks for a sweatshirt. Well, well Kyle, you you actually bring up an interesting point. What really goes on into a price tag of anything? I mean, it's all marketing. I mean, what makes a jacket thirteen hundred dollars? It's like also like you know an artist who says like my painting is fifty grand. Like it's all about like it's, you know name your price to go buy it. Really, like I mean, a whiskey from Japan could be a thousand dollars, and you're like this tastes like Jack Daniels. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, that, and that's and that's the and that's the funny thing. But well, I mean, but then you bring up a good point, like the the range of of prices from Jack Daniels alone, and you know some of the the prices and the and the quality, like you know a Jack Daniels black label is going to be a whole lot different than a Jack Daniels green label. Uh, and it, but anywho, <laughs> no, for sure. But it, what's what's so interesting is I really think it comes down to like if somebody wants like a like a whiskey coke, their brain yeah. says I want a Jack and Coke because like oh, that's 100%. like a stand- yeah, that's like the standard drink, like which I think they actually call that a Lemmy now after a uh, Lemmy Kilmeister really? of a uh, of a uh, of a uh, Motorhead. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I there's just actually always, some... I just I, I I just always hear you know anytime I'm on a plane I hear people just say <laughs> Jack and Coke, please. But it's like it's a different taste. Then you can't yeah. get like a you can't get a Jim Beam and Coke. Like that's not nah. going to do the same thing. Or like a Maker's no, Mark no. and Coke. Like no, if somebody wants. Not. 
Yeah, it's they're looking for that Jack and Coke. Like yeah. for me, either, I like either, either that or a rum and Coke. So like that was that was what I grew up on. So, dude, I'm a uh, I'm a Tito's yeah. and soda guy. I like uh, club soda and vodka. That's that okay. is my that is my standard. And okay. And, yeah, it's very boring, but um, hey, you stay hydrated. You stay hydrated while you're drinking. I so, I, uh, I like the uh, I, I like the theory, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I appreciate that you like the theory. I I think I originally started it. It was like okay, I can have some drinks and still hit my weight loss goals. So like, I think that's like why it started because you can you know you can have a few of those and yeah, you're not you're not getting the sugar intake of like the rum and cokes and the jack and yep. cokes. Yep, yep, yep. And and you're also not getting the hangover, which is really nice. Oh, for and, sure. Um, and I learned that from my mom. She's um, she is uh, as I would like to say, an expert when it comes to vodka uh-huh. sodas. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Your, mom, your, mom, your mom seems a little bit more sophisticated than Tito's, though. I'm 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 envisioning your mom as like a Belvedere vodka lady. Kyle, my dog's name is Tito. Oh, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so um make make no mistake we, we stick to tito's uh, we are not uh, above uh, we're not nothing above a good tito's nothing wrong with a good tito's man. <laughs> nothing wrong i love it i love it i love and i'm not shitting on tito's man i, I actually love tito's if, if i'm gonna drink any if i'm gonna drink any vodka vodka is not my Dude, definitely a lot of people favorite. can't handle the vodka they think it tastes like rubbing alcohol or you know it's yeah you know well i mean uh, you know to each to each his own so well, yeah. but uh but yeah no it's it's, it's funny that you uh, you bring up like the hydration and, and all that <laughs> kind of deal when it comes to the alcohol uh so like one of my favorite funny slap you know funny stories slash serious stories from when i was when i wrestled at, at ucf mm-hmm. was uh it, it you know we had this really old crusty assistant coach uh his name was <laughs> his name's johnny rouse um real crusty old old bastard hey i'm johnny i'm real crusty oh dude i, lo- I love that love that <laughs> man um uh, you know, just so many epic stories. I mean, the dude like suffer, you know, suffered from diabetes and like had to have like all his toes amputated and like showed up at practice the next day with like his feet all bandaged up. And he's like, that's oh, literally my, oh. that's my hero. You're talking yeah, about my hero. He's, he's, <laughs> he's freaking awesome. But okay. you know, he's, he's tell, so he's telling us this story. Like we're all sitting around like after practice one day or something. And he's like, you know, back in the day, like five, six, seven, ten years ago, when we won our first national championship, you know, we had this, uh, we had this guy Tom, and uh, you know, or we had this guy Paul, and and he told Tom that, you know, Tom, I'm so serious about, uh, I'm so serious about winning the national championship this year that I've, uh, I've decided to give up alcohol for the season, and Tom, <laughs> and, and Tom goes. Yeah, Paul, I'm one up in you there. I'm giving up all carbonated beverages. <laughs> and uh, well, behold, we find out from uh, Tom, you know, Tom uh, a whole lot later. He's like, yeah, just because I gave up carbonated beverages didn't mean there were a lot of alcohols that were uh, <laughs> non-carbonated. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning Johnny Depp likes whiskey in the morning. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, but, but no, it was, it was just, it was, it was, yeah, so th- those, those uh, epic college dressing parties were, you know, we're definitely a thing, even on a, even on a national championship winning, uh, winning team. So well, yeah, that did was, they ever uh, get was, you to do a, did they ever get you to do a keg stand? That's like, that's the real question. Uh, I, there were definitely a few parties that had some keg stands. I actually don't think I ever participated in one of those particular parties. Um, I don't know. Ke- keg stands weren't really my, weren't really my thing. I did, I did, I did some, I did some beer bongs, but, uh, <laughs> never, never, never. It was never really a keg stand guy. I was so, just a little, I was just a little too much and aggressive for me. You no, know, I understand, man. And I wish that I could say the same for myself, but I would say around 10th, 11th and senior year of high school, I would say that like, I was the designated, like, Hey, let's use Jared as kind of like the party favor. Like he's kind of like going to be, we'll just throw 20 shots down his throat. We'll throw him on top of the keg stand for a hundred seconds. I was used. I Ooh. really, I was used and abused, man. And Brutal. I, hundred percent. And I think I made myself, um, accessible for that kind of mistreatment. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it it was like, it was definitely like one of those, 
you know, you, you definitely feel like the life of the party when there's like 80 people around you chanting your name when you're doing a keg stand and you're like, Oh, they love me. Yeah. <laughs> and Defi I def definitely, definitely that surface, uh, you know, the, the the stuff we do for popularity sometimes I yeah reckon. that's that's really what i'm getting at because it was like yeah. oh i can i can i can hang with the rest and they want me to keep coming back yeah <laughs> but um no i i can honestly say it's kind of like also like uh it's kind of like the vodka soda in a way you do like you do uh, um two keg stands and if each of those last like 100 seconds there's no way you can keep that beer down without throwing up so oh, it's yeah. like in a way it's like a diet drink having a keg stand <laughs> Okay. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna take a hard pass on the keg stand man <laughs> well, dude, I'm, I'm 31 now these are all these are back in my day like crusty johnny like <laughs> i haven't done a keg stand i haven't done a beer bong i haven't done anything that's like outrageous partying like i i, I sip on drinks now it's like oh, oh. dude same, same. But, but the thing I'm, is I'm... man I'm no stranger to uh, admitting that the initial buzz from like a first drink is real. I'm not like a denier. Like, I'm not like, oh, it takes me a lot to feel it. Like, I will get a buzz. No, from, no, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, well, especially, especially once you don't drink for a while and then you, right. you sip on that first one, man, it, ooh, 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 that, that, it hits, it hits you hard and fast, man. Yeah. But, it's, uh, uh, but no, no, I, th I think we're, I think we're both at the, point in life where we're like yeah let's let's in, let's find the thing that we enjoy so <laughs> and uh I'd sip on it and savor it yeah you know? do uh, uh do yeah. people around the training center now uh coming up coming up to you being like hey that's blind sweater kyle <laughs> <laughs> not quite yet but we're we're on we're on the way man we're on the we're on the war path so do you I have think, a, I, do you I, have a sauna I, there uh i do we do actually have a sauna here we have a sauna we have a steam room uh yeah, I was, so. I was thinking some good promotion for the show would just be putting like a poster of you and I like just outside the sauna. Oh, we could do that. <laughs> we need to get a poster. Yeah. We need to get a poster made. We need some t-shirts. We need we need merch. We need merch. We, already, we, we will pay you to take this merch <laughs> off our hands. Promote us. <laughs> oh man, have you uh, have you had some great uh, great great training days this week? You know, man, it, I, I've had a couple of good training days, a couple of really rough ones. So, uh, like this past Tuesday, I ran a two mile, uh, all out time trial on the, on the track. Mm -hmm. Um, and that went pretty well. I ran like 11 minutes and 35 seconds, which was my, one of my better, uh, two mile time trials on the track that I've, that I've ever done, especially here at, at elevation. Um, and then on, on Thursday, I, uh, threw down a, a 20 minute, uh, bike power test and, um, had a, um, a solid, uh, a solid, uh, power to weight ratio. Um, mm -hmm. so can't, can't complain too much about that, but then, uh, but then yesterday had a, had a pretty rough day in the, in the pool. We had a, a set of, um, two times, uh, two times through, um, it was five by 200 meters on 300 or on three minutes and 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically every three minutes and 30 seconds, you have to take off. Uh, so if you come in, uh, you swim your 203 minutes or you swim your 300 and, or your, or, sorry, your 203 minutes or your 200 in like three minutes and 28 seconds, you have to take off on the 330. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, you know, if, if, if there's anyone out there that has a swimming background, um, they, yeah, they, you know, they're, they're probably laughing at me. They're like, you can't make a 330 interval. Uh, but for, for those of us that, you know, didn't grow up with a, a you know, a set of gills, um, uh, it's, it was really, it's really hard. Um, uh, it's, uh, I've, I've been, I've, uh, I've been having some, uh, some trouble with, uh, with a shoulder impingement, uh, as well. So that, that made for a little bit of a rough day yesterday. So I had to go to, uh, had to get stretched out on a, uh, torture rack, also known as a, uh, 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 sports medicine, uh, uh, treatment table and uh get my shoulder work done yesterday so that was that was a lot of fun <laughs> i like i like torture rack that sounds really good like yeah that's, that's man, a good yeah. way to describe it you yeah. ever see the disney movie uh like the D disney channel original movie the 13th year where that swimmer actually is like a merman uh no i haven't oh man well he 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 would understand having gills yeah yeah for sure no <laughs> the uh, if if uh the only the only movie that was like swimming related mm -hmm. that i really actually kind of enjoyed swim um, fan? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was The Guardian. Uh, so I don't know if you ever saw that one. It's uh, no. Ashton, Ashton Kutcher actually stars in it. Um, uh-huh. And it's a uh, it's about uh, it's about the Coast Guard uh, rescue okay. swimmers. Yeah. Um, and Ashton Kutcher is like this this hot shot young recruit that comes in. Think he's just going to be like, a, you know, the most badass dude on the planet. And, mm-hmm. you know, the old crusty guy who has like, you know, a gazillion rescue swimmer saves under his belt. Um, and he, you know, you know, wind up, you know, they become kind of swim buddies and swim partners and uh you know they learn a lot from each other so it was actually a really it was actually a very cheesy very good movie but that yeah that was the only swimming related movie that i was like oh this looks kind of good he's been in some great movies do where's my car fantastic movie (laughs) actually i i i I gotta i gotta admit i'm not i don't i don't watch tons of movies uh but but yeah no occasionally I'll, i'll 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 indulge. So my, uh, my, my girlfriend and I, one of the things that, you know, you know, one of the things that Jess and I did, uh, especially when the, when, especially when the pandemic first hit and we actually could not get to each other mm-hmm. across the border, um, was we would, uh, we would dial up every, you know, every Friday and do a, and do a movie night together over FaceTime. So, uh, so we, we would dive into like Disney plus and, um, you know, some, some stuff. So it was kind of fun. So, Okay, so for me, it's like if I'm watching a movie with somebody who can't sit there and like describe all the visual scenes, I kind of just tune out. Yeah. So if you're watching it and you've told me that your girlfriend also can't see. So yep. if you guys are doing that dial up movie night together, is it basically is it a lot of just hanging out together, talking time? And because uh, a, li- a little bit, it. a little bit. But we also um, one of the things that we did was mm-hmm. we. uh like we would try to find a movie that uh, one of us had seen in the yeah. past. So we kind of knew what was going mm-hmm. on and, and like the other one hadn't seen. So we could kind of tell the other what was going on. Uh, but then actually, um, so, so Apple and Disney have actually done a really good job of getting some more audio described movies. Really? Uh, um, so I was able to die. I was able to, to find some, some audio described movies, mm-hmm. uh, both on, and, uh, there's actually a feature on Disney plus, uh, in, in your settings that you can turn on audio description, uh, now. So you can, so I, for a, a, a large, uh, for, at least for, a, at least for a, a set of the movies, um, you know, it, it still can be hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's, there's a lot more audio described, uh, movies and shows and stuff on Disney plus now and on Apple. So yeah, we watched like, uh, there was a, there's a, uh, a movie, uh, called Ferdinand. It was about a, it was about a bull that we watched on, on Apple. Uh-huh. Awesome. Awesome. Freaking movie, dude. Really? I am, I am not, a, I am not above, <laughs> uh, watching a good old kids cartoon movie, man. <laughs> I, I'm so nostalgic. <laughs> um, what's your favorite cartoon? Like, what's your favorite animation? A- animation, not anime. <laughs> <laughs> not really an anime guy. Yeah. Uh, 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 dude, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's hard to go wrong with any of those late '80s, early '90s Disney movies. So yeah, like the, the Lion King to me is yeah, like un- li- is, yeah, is Lion unbeatable King. one. Yeah, Lion King is is way up there hercules is up there i love hercules and i think okay so often people will be like aladdin's as good as the lion king and Uh, i know for uh, i know for a fact those people have not compared them recently like they just they're they're going off of their childhood they have not seen them side by side in the last five years but if you if you rewatch the lion king and aladdin it's very obvious which one's better uh hands down it's lion king man (laughs) that's why you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's a but yeah that that's the kind of stuff that jess and i w- you know we love to watch we love to watch stuff from our childhood as well so yeah it, yeah it's, it's amazing how that. i will i gravitate always towards movies that i've even seen like when i was like five or six or seven like I, it's like oh this is familiar because like i can like watch it and exactly almost, yeah it's like it, it uh it brings back this memory and and I, it's a relatability thing it's it's yep. a lot of things yep it's but, actually um, it's actually part of the reason why I, I love the like i i never 
I could never really get as into the new Star Wars that, uh-huh. that came out in the last like five or six years. Uh, like I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm an original, I'm an original six all the yeah, way. Like, man. like so. if I ever have kids, like they're going to be like, why is my dad making me watch Boy Meets World again? Like, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm like you okay. don't understand. I know every character and how they look. That's okay. why. Okay. Okay. Okay, man. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta admit one of the things that I like when I, when I, when we, when Jess and I first got Disney plus uh-huh. during the pandemic, uh, I did binge watch all like seven seasons of boy meets world. Dude, <laughs> it's the best, right? It, it was, oh my God, dude. I was, okay. I was busting a gut Kyle, the whole time. Does, it was awesome. Is there like any funnier character than Eric in anything? Hey, he, He's pretty good, man. Yeah, he's so funny. Pretty good. And he's pretty good. And I can like literally tell you who like I think like are the hot girls from that show because like my mind just goes back to like how I was as a kid. And I was like, oh man, I thought like I thought Angela was beautiful. I thought Topanga was cute in a few of the seasons. I thought oh, yeah. I thought Rachel was hot. Like I I used to and then like Corey had some other girlfriends, like side girlfriends. I was like, oh, she was cute too. Like yep, I, yep. I man, that show is I could I could rewatch that. I can rewatch was, South Park at any moment. And for South some Park reason, too. and for some reason, dude, this is a weird one, but Breaking Bad, which came out like in the last 10 years. So I've never seen it. Uh-huh. But the thing is, I've seen it so many times with different people to show them the series yeah. that I actually feel like in my like mind's eye, I've made up this whole like idea of the show. Like I can literally be watching it like right now and be like, mm-hmm. oh, Hank's wife, Marie, wears a lot of purple. And it's like, how the heck would I know that? But, yeah. but besides, I've just seen it with so many people who have said that. So in my eye, in my mind's eye, I'm like, I'm just visualizing constantly. Yeah, I do. I do the same thing with the uh, with the Big Bang Theory. So that really? was my yeah, that was my uh, that was my show of choice over the last mm-hmm. uh, fifteen years or so. Yeah. So yeah, no, I I, I like I want to get I wanted to get into Breaking Bad, uh, but man, I like I uh, you know I, I watched a co- I think I watched it like a, for the first season, the first mm-hmm. couple of seasons, and you know just just kept getting distracted, and you know now I'm like I I really don't have time or the mental yeah. energy to invest in five right. seasons of that kind of intensity <laughs> yeah so, it's, it's where, definitely where, an intense like, thing whereas like if i you know i can just you know i can turn on a, a quick episode of, of big bang and be like and fall you know, asleep <laughs> 28 28 minutes you know 27 you know tw- actually really 21 22 minutes you know without commercials of you know just laughing my butt off fall asleep <laughs> yeah so it's good to have those like wind down shows or like a wind down podcast or like for sure YouTube, or a youtube show that you watch like blind sweaters you know it's just good to exactly. have those shows <laughs> exactly that's that's we're just giving the people <laughs> what they want we are good for falling asleep too that's, <laughs> that's what we're here 100%. for i mean there's a i mean there's a reason why our 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 episodes run like an hour and 22 or an hour and 26 minutes long because David up there is just, you know, falling asleep on us. And, you know, yeah, forgets, we need... uh, forgets to pipe into your headset. Uh, Jared, uh, try to unplug us, David, unplug <laughs> us. end of the show. Now, no, we he's, just need to do he's, like he's going to, he, he's going to, he's going to start getting bored and like throwing up like ridiculous graphics over our faces and like make us look like, you know, those, those weird, characters from south park where like you know their their heads move up and down from like the upper jaw instead of the lower jaw or so, like i don't know he's gonna come up with something ridiculous we just need to start doing like 10 hour long asmrs where we're just like keeping people asleep and just comfortable oh, there you sweaters. go there you go how's everybody doing out there <laughs> so um dude what is uh what body part do you like to, do you look forward to making the sorest on you oh Dude, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I can shoot. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not touching that. Dude, I got because I'm asking because yesterday I did about like 360 yards of walking lunges, and my g- 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 glutes are so sore today, dude. Yeah, and no, it's, it's like, a- yeah, sitting down is a challenge. Oh, I hear you, man. Um, ah, mm-hmm. oh, man, I, I gotta say, I don't like, I don't, I don't know if I 
thoroughly enjoy work, you know, working out any specific muscle group over, over any else. Um, no, but sometimes you'll just be shocked. Like, how did I, get, how did I do this yesterday? Oh yeah. No, I mean, for, for me, a lot of the, I mean, like my hamstrings yeah. or my glutes or my, my lats are a big one that yeah. um, like, I, like I, um, like Wednesday, we had a, we had a circuit day that was supposed to be fairly light. Um, uh, so that we didn't destroy ourselves for our bike test on Thursday and like mm -hmm. Thursday and Friday, my lats were just shot, um, from like banded lat pull, like straight arm banded lat pull downs. Because even um, though you were going light, it was the volume that made you sore, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dude, I know it's ridiculous. It's like, okay, cool. Like I am a volume guy, 100%. Like I'm not, I'm not the guy who claims to be the strongest in the room, but I have, Dude, I've got the best mind muscle connection you can find East Coast of the Mississippi. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And um, that's my claim to fame. And it is if I go, if I go like just controlled, I can make myself sore with no weight at all. Like it oh, doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. I could act like I'm doing a barbell back squat, but with like literally, it's just a visualize visualization thing. And I will be sore based off of that. I can only imagine. I've never put that to the test, but I'm gonna tell you it'll it would make me sore. Hmm. Maybe, yeah. maybe we should, we should put, <laughs> we should put, we should put that to the test. And, Dude, uh, I was like, I was showing David the other day. I was like, I know like, you know, you want to, you want to squat heavy, you want to bench heavy, but I go, this is all it would take me to be as sore as I am today. And I was just doing like the motion of benching, but like full and controlled and like acting like <laughs> I was like just getting a full pump. And I was like, this is all it would take. And he's like, yeah, if you did like 8,000 of those. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, it just it depends, depends, it depends. But yeah, um, walking today is. I also kicked my bed really hard last night and on, with my shin, not not intentionally. Oh. And um, that happens sure to all of us. I don't I don't know what you're talking about at all. Man. Some more than others, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'll, um, just, I'll just careen off of walls with you know without notice. Like I'm like, oh yeah, like that's gonna that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> yeah, it, it sucks having these broad shoulders when we've got such narrow walkways. <laughs> exactly, man. Like the the reason the the reason the ADA uh, the reason the ADA's uh, door codes are like forty eight inches wide is not because of uh, you know because we got to fit wheelchairs there. It's because I got to fit these broad ass shoulders through them. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I have no I, idea. I have no idea what the ADA codes are. <laughs> Honestly, though, you it's sold me. I think I think it is something like 40, 40 inches or 42 inches or something like that for like new buildings. Hold uh, on, I got I got a tape measure right here. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't clear it. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, ridiculous. But yeah, man, I kicked my bed hard. It was like, it was one of those, um, I, I literally let out an ow. Like it was like, a, ow, <laughs> like it was like that kind of a thing. And I like, I fell to the floor and literally could not put weight on it for like, and there was like, it, it was definitely a contusion because it felt like there was like a knot in my oh, bone, yeah. but it wasn't oh, like yeah. there was and then I just started thinking about like going to Thailand and training kickboxing and kicking like bamboo and like really like just oh. like callousing my shins. Oh, and I'm like, dude. these guys are nuts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude. So, so I had a so I, I, I tr so back in high school. Yeah. Uh, I trained with a guy who uh, who did some, just did a variety of, of martial arts. And yeah. He was like a two-time national champion in uh, in uh, Japanese karate um, mm -hmm. when he was when he was younger. Desante, um, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> um, and uh, and he and he was like, yeah, man, like he was like when I was at the height of my uh, my karate career, I could bend an aluminum baseball bat into a perfect ninety degree angle with three kicks. Uh, what? and I was like, okay, right, you're just insane. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and, 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 he, and he was like, oh dude, it's, it's, it's really not that hard. Like it just took like 10 years of like sitting and rubbing a glass bottle up and down my, up and down my shins for two hours at a time. 
to, to, so to get rid of the to get rid of the feeling in my, in my shins i was like okay you're insane no it really insane. is insane it's like a, it's literally training your body like to be a different thing because like yeah. imagine being like a street fight with that dude like you go to kick him and he's just like oh, not today buddy <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah dude oh dude you gotta uh oh man if uh uh are, are you a are you an mma fan at all kyle it's like a religion to me. Like literally okay, I am, okay. I'm a UFC nut. I, yeah, like all, okay. all mixed martial arts. I watch like yeah. Bellator. I watch PFL. Yeah, I watch it all. Sure. It's yeah. It's yeah. Nuts. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not like, I'm not, I don't follow it. Yeah. Um, I don't follow it, it, you know, religiously or anything like that. Uh, yeah. I appreciate it. You know, I, I wrestled, I dabbled in jujitsu a little bit mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, but um, a great book that you mm -hmm. got to read is, is about the history. Uh, it's, it's actually a, uh, the, the focus is on Pat Militage. Okay. Um, but, uh, and like kind of how he rose to, to prominence and yeah. then, uh, and then like how, like all of his athletes kind of spun off and like, you had like, you know, you had the Militage fighters and then you mm -hmm. had the Hughes fighters and all that. But man, some of the stories in, uh, in that book, oh, I think it was called blood in the cage is the, is the book. Um, and it just it it basically talks about the history of, of mm -hmm. UFC and, and MMA and all that is really really good and just some of the some of the early street fights you know some of the early uh, like street fights that those guys yeah. got into was just was just insane like you know I, I think there was one uh, I think there was there was one uh, I re I remember uh, uh, Pat Militage yeah you know, he was he had already been like uh, he had already kind of I think he had won like four of his four of his titles or something like that mm -hmm. at that point and uh you know he goes he goes up to uh to chat with uh one of the original ufc um stars and i think it was a uh, i think his name was tank oh. and uh and you know and militage is like 165 170 pounds and tank is just a beast of a man because like tanky tank was uh he, he was in the early days of UFC mm -hmm. um, where they didn't separate into weight classes. Okay. Um, so they didn't start doing that until like, I don't know, UFC like 20 or 25 mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, and so Tank is like this 300 pound behemoth of a man. And like, he just starts like mouthing off to, to Militage. And I think Militage just punishes this dude. It was... <laughs> Like Millis just like rips at it. Like he had a, he had a couple of false teeth in the in the front of his mouth. He just rips about it, just wails on this three hundred pound dude. And like and then like it, it it created like this big old brawl and like oh my gosh, dude. Some of the some of the insane insanity that went on in those early days of, of UFC was just was just crazy. But yeah, blood in the cage. You gotta gotta check I'll out. I'll definitely that. check that out. That's awesome. Did yeah, you uh so. did you love training jujitsu? Uh, it was, it was fun. Like I, I mainly trained, I mainly, uh, dabbled in jujitsu purely for the, um, purely to improve my wrestling. Yeah. Um, so I, I would do it like, you know, once a week I would go to, uh, I would go to a gym and, and roll on the roll around, uh, on the mats and, you know, you know, just work on body control and body awareness. Cause that, that more than anything was, uh, was, is, was the point of jujitsu. Uh, yeah. and then that really, and then you know, taking a few moves from jujitsu, um, regarding, you know, in terms of, uh, using like weight. pressure, you know, pressure points and uh -huh. weight distribution yeah. and, uh, very minor joint manipulation. And then, you know, trying to bring that over and translate that to the, to the wrestling mat. Um, yeah, it, it definitely, it definitely sucked. Uh, when I was actually For rolling sure. around with guys that were actually like, you know, jujitsu guys, because yeah. like, you know, they uh man they you know they they took no mercy and like i got put in so many choke holds uh because like you know as, as a wrestler where as a wrestler i was taught to stay off my back but then in jujitsu it's like stay <laughs> on really good back. yeah <laughs> i'm like i can't do it i can't stay on my i can't stay on my back it's going against my instincts and then they just put me in this in this choke hold i'm like oh god <laughs> i'm done when you think back to like a grappling match, wrestling, jujitsu, when you think back to like those just intense two minutes where it's just you against another human, like, do you, I don't know, like, as far as like exertion goes, like, wouldn't you say that that's like some of the hardest 
two minutes you can even put yourself through because it's like you're you're physically competing against another person. The last two minutes of a very intense wrestling match yeah. was yeah. always insane. Yeah. Um, probably. Oh man, I, I had so many, so many good ones in, in high school and a, and a few in college that I could look back on, but yeah, no, it was, it was just, it was really, really intense. Yeah. Um, I think back to like any jujitsu moment where like, the, like whoever my coach was is rolling with me and we're like doing like five minute rounds or whatever. It's literally like being on like an airdyne assault bike going like as hard as you possibly can for five minutes or whatever. It's, it, or it might even be harder than that in my mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, so like for me, it was like, and especially once I got to the college, mm -hmm. um, once I got to the college ranks, um, it was, it wasn't just the, it, it was the combination of physical brutality, right. Along with the, the strategy of trying, you know, trying to score, mm -hmm. um, score points and avoid being scored on and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So, yeah, I, I had some, uh, I had some pretty intense, pretty intense matchups. And, you know, you know, there were, there were a lot of times in, in wrestling matches where, you know, no points would be scored in that, that final two minute period. Mm -hmm. um, but like just the constant back and forth and the, the shifting of weight and the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the adjusting uh, to your opponent and then trying to attack and your opponent adjusting to you and, and all that like it didn't look like you were working really hard but it was so mentally and physically draining that right. it was it, it, yeah when you're battling you know when you're when you're battling in a combat sport there there's yeah. nothing there's no, nothing like it <laughs> when, you're ga when your gas tank is out and somebody else's gas tank i mean it is it's hilarious <laughs> okay. oh yeah no i i i you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know how many times my gas tank really, truly got emptied when I was wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm sure it did at some point. Uh, but like, man, the the best example I can give of just gas tank being completely emptied was was during was last year at the. Uh, uh american Con or at the uh, continental championships which was basically our our race that was going to determine who was going to the paralympics for team usa okay and tell me that yeah uh so you know so so no 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 major stakes at all on the line <laughs> um you know there was basically three you know there was there was you know there were basically they usa triathlon had to decide between they had you know they had they could pick two guys to go to the, to go to the Paralympics. And really? they had three to choose from in the, in the blind and visually impaired class. Um, okay. and did you know these other guys or you were, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, okay. We've been competing against each other for, for years and like, you know, okay. knew each other and knew each other's strengths and weaknesses and all that. And, uh -huh. um, and all that. But, uh, so I, so, so that particular day, um, yeah. It Take was, me back there. It was, yeah. Oh man, it was hot. It was <laughs> very windy. Mm -hmm. Um, like I mean, we had like probably twenty plus mile per hour, like winds and gusts mm -hmm. and and stuff. And so what that did was that caused the lake that we swam in to get really wavy and really rough. Um, and so like I, I'm pretty sure I brought the water level down by at least a few inches. Uh, with how much water I sucked in. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I came out. Glad we so still I, have you with us. <laughs> uh, yeah, tr trust me, man. Oh, uh, that's not even the good stuff. Uh, oh. So I came out of the water almost two minutes behind um, the guy that was that, the guy that was leading. Okay. And, and my, uh, my guide and I just busted our asses um, and we closed the gap. We uh, managed to, ma we managed to, uh, over the course of the 20 K bike, we managed to close the gap down, um, and caught our opponent and caught, uh, you know, caught, uh, his name's Brad Snyder. Uh, mm -hmm. so we caught, so we caught Brad and his guide, Greg, um, and we came out of, of, of the second transition together mm -hmm. and, and my guide, Andy, uh, he and I, we just 
go for it. Like really? I mean, we're, we're running like five, you know, five minute, 40 second miles or something. Wait, so you're now off the bike. You're now running. Yeah. So we're, okay. we're off the bike and we're now running and we, uh-huh. we get, we catch and pass Brad and Greg. Um, and then they, they tuck in behind us and then they pass us and then we pass them and we go this back and forth tit for tat for like a mile and a half almost two miles and then you know finally brad is able to you know pull around you know brad and greg pull around us and and just you know they're able to uh to to run away and at that point um i actually have this gap in my memory i don't remember what happened from that point in the race Uh uh-huh until after we crossed the finish line did you beat him no, he, he won by 51 seconds. So I, 50. I, to- so he, I, uh, I totally, I totally cracked. Um, like I totally blew up, cracked. Um, Andy apparently was like, uh, he, like, he was like begging me not to like keel over and die basically. Cause like, I was just like, I was, dude, I was, a uh, I was basically like a, a hopeless drunk. Like, were you upset? Like, super weeping? upset? No, no, no. Oh. I, I, it was, it was one of those things where oh, okay. like, we were just like, it was such a battle, and like, I went so deep into the hurt locker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That like, I literally, my body and mind literally shut down, and it, the only thing that kept me going forward was like training and the will mm-hmm. uh, to keep on going. Uh, so the, the, so like basically from, I would say 1500 meters to go in the race. So like yeah. just under a mile to go, uh-huh. um, like I, re- I, like, I remember a little bit at that point of like really starting to hurt, but then like, I would say, yeah, I, it, was, it was probably not long after that, that there's just this blank gap in my memory. And the first thing I remember is just hurling into a garbage can at the at the finish line and that was apparently a few minutes after we had crossed the finish line yeah uh but but yeah man talk about going just to a whole nother level yeah um like that was and like i i, I was able to finish you know I, I finished in second um and so they took they took brad and and, and me obviously to the to the paralympics brad actually won gold at the, at the games and i i got fifth so like it, it was, it was a, it was a, but yeah, no, that was uh it was, it was probably, uh, it, it was a, it was a really highly anticipated race, at least here in the U S uh, wow. for, for triathlon. Yeah. Um, and it was just, apparently it was, it was worth the, it was worth the showdown <laughs> to see, right. just to at least see my epic implosion. <laughs> I, have a few, I have a few questions based off of this epic story. Um, okay. So when you're okay, when you're at that moment when you're saying he went, he beat you by 51 seconds. In so your guide is obviously, I mean, 51 seconds, that's not that far ahead of you. So no. your guide is obviously watching this happen in front of you. Yeah. What's he saying? Like, what's your guide saying to let you know, hey man, like we could actually do this if there was, you know, if there's one more gear in you. <laughs> Like, what's your guide saying to you to let you know, like, hey, this is not out of the realm of possibility right now? Um, I mean, a lot of it just comes down to, like, uh, you know, I mean, at that at that point in, it, you know, in that particular race, Andy was yeah. a little bit more concerned about just keeping me upright and getting me across okay. the finish line. Okay. Like, at that point, Andy was just like, if we just finish second, we're going to the games. Okay. Cool. Uh, so it was, it was, it really became like, uh like but he but a lot of the a lot of what my guides will communicate in those kind of instances is you know they'll they'll try to give me some time splits or some time gaps and Mm -hmm. and let in you know try to encourage me hey man you like you know just trust it you're looking good um he's looking terrible you look way better than he does Uh um you know punch you know punch through the you know punch through this headwind punch up this hill uh you know just just being, you know, being, you know, trying to coach, honestly, just coach me through, um, some of that stuff. And then, um, but then we also, but then we also, you know, my guide also has to look, keep an eye on the, the per- people or person that is coming up behind me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in that particular race, Andy 
was keeping an eye on the the guy that was sitting in third. Um, yeah, how far behind was he? Uh, he finished 17 seconds behind me. Oh man! So yeah, it was Kyle, it was super. <laughs> it was that super, is intense. Yeah, it was super super close. It wasn't the closest race I've. It wasn't the closest race I've ever been part what, of. What's that? Um, I uh in yokohama japan last year when i got my first major international win i uh the guy that uh he and i went we went one two um in the race we were literally no more than two seconds apart for the entire race until about 800 meters to go and that's when i i made my move and i i was able to open up just enough of a gap and i think i beat him by seven seconds two seconds how i mean what's how are you not like tripping over each other that's literally that makes it sound like you guys are like on each other's ankles uh, we pretty much were he was literally just like a few steps but like he was literally a few steps off of my shoulder most like so like i so like i swam on his feet pretty much the whole (laughs) Uh uh like i was literally slapping his feet for the entire swim um then he was able to get through transition about two seconds faster than I was. So he came out of transition about two seconds ahead of me. Uh, my guide and I just stuck to his, uh, you know, we just kind of stuck to his wheel until about halfway through the bike. Then we surged ahead and then he, you know, he sucked our wheel for the second half of the bike. Oh, wow. Um, uh, and then like we, ca- and then we literally came out of transition together shoulder to shoulder um and i just i literally my only goal was to stay one to two steps ahead of him for the entire run are you Um, listening to like his steps oh yeah oh yeah like i mean they they were so like and his guide is and his guide was constantly communicating with him just as as my you know just as my guide was and so like they're constantly i mean they're they were chattering in spanish is there but is there (laughs) shit talk is there like shit talking ever going on when you're doing like this close to somebody not when we're ra- not when we were <laughs> racing like that. Um, and, uh, weeks and, before and, on weeks before on Twitter. <laughs> not uh, unfor- unfortunately, not really, man. I, I've thought about maybe. Well, it, it, but and here's the thing: like Hoda and I, uh, and so so uh, Jose uh, Jose, uh, you know, we all call him Hota. Uh-huh. Um, he uh, he's just. <laughs> He's just such a class act and just such an awesome dude. Like, uh-huh. I, like I can't, t- I can't shit talk the guy. Um, dude, you need me as like your fight promoter. I'm gonna be your <laughs> promo guy. I'm gonna be. <laughs> but, but, the same, but the same thing happened with like, you know, with, when I like when I'm going up against uh, a guy like a, a guy like Brad Snyder. Like, I mean, like I love like Brad is just such an awesome human being. Yeah. Uh, that like I can't shit talk him, man. Dude, that's why uh, you need me. And, good cop, bad can't... cop. <laughs> The Schneider's got nothing on you, Kyle. <laughs> so, but, uh, but no, nah, man, it, it was so, but yeah, but like, uh, so Hoda and I, we like, we're like, we just, I mean, like the two of us were just so wiped and like, like we're running at the edge of our edge of our ability for that, for, you know, that entire race in Yokohama. Um, and then, uh, like, you know, we cross the finish line. Like, there's all these COVID protocols. Like, uh-huh. you're not allowed to hug competitors. You're not allowed to handshake. <laughs> Hoda and I were like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> come, come here, Hoda. Um, we fell into each other. We were like, oh, my God. That was such I mean, a good race. Dude, I was going to ask you, because there's, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of you doing this. No. And so it's got to be like, I mean, you, you know, everybody by first and last name. And I'm, I'm sure there's, like, times even before and after the race where you guys are like, sitting down hanging out or what what's there can there be a, yeah, there, yeah there can there can be um you know it's it's uh you know it's more after the race um uh, mm-hmm. than anything uh sometimes before the race like you know like we'll be hanging out at like uh the athlete briefing or something like that and like i've gotten to know like uh there's a, a guy from south africa that i've gotten pretty friendly with um there's a, a dude from italy um uh, there's a, a guy from Ireland, uh, Ho, you know, Ho, uh, Hoda from, um, from Spain. He's, he's, you know, class act, awesome, awesome dude that I've gotten, I've gotten to be pretty, pretty friendly with. Uh, but yeah, like we're, we're just all like, uh, there's just this, I, I think there's just this mutual respect across, yeah. uh, because I mean, look, man, triathlon's fucking hard. 
Yeah. Um, and it's, it's and hard it's, for me. It's hard for me to even imagine. So I can yeah. only imagine how hard it is. Yeah, it's 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 really hard, and it's really like anyone who completes it just completes a triathlon is mm -hmm. is it's really really impressive. No matter if you, you know, I, I mean, anytime you swim, bike, and run. Okay, well, uh, tell, tell us idiots though, what, what is a triathlon specifically? We all know that it's biking, swimming, and running, but how much of each specifically? Um, it can be any, it, uh, the, the thing is like for, for, a, for a triathlon, it, it can yeah. be any distance. So I've done, I've done triathlons that are 300 meter swim, um, six kilo 6.1 kilometer bike and 1500 meter run okay um, so that's like a that's a sprint 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 yeah that, that that's what's called a you know it's known as a super sprint i've done uh -huh. you know so at the at the paralympic level we compete at sprint triathlon so okay. that's a 750 meter swim a 20k bike and a 5k run um and then you have what's called the international some people call it the olympic distance um, which is 1500 meter swim, 40 kilometer bike and 10 kilometer run. Um, and then you have, uh, what mo most people are, are more familiar with are the half Ironman and Ironman, mm -hmm. uh, distance triathlons. And so, uh, so a half Ironman is one is a 1.2 mile swim, 56 mile bike, 13.1 mile run. Uh, and then a full Ironman is, is obviously, um, oh, double twice, that. Tw double that. So 2.4 <laughs> mile swim, 112 mile bike, 26.2 mile marathon. You've uh, done an Ironman, right? I've done three Ironmans. The Ironman. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I've done three Ironmans. I've done. How long four. does that take you? How long does an Ironman take you? Uh, it depends on the course. Depends on how fit I am. My first Ironman took me. 15 hours and 47 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, my second Ironman took me 11 hours and 46 minutes. And then the last Ironman that I did took me 10 hours and 59 minutes. So wow. I, 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 uh, um, my goal for that race was to be, I, I, uh, my goal was to be the first totally blind athlete to go under 11 hours for, for an Ironman. Um, and, so I, 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 so I, did, so I did that. Uh, I, I still hold that. I think there are four other visually impaired athletes um, that have gone faster than me. So at, at the time when I said when I when I did that, mm -hmm. there were only two other VI athletes that had gone under 11 hours, um, but they had they they had Some fair sight. a fair amount of usable sight. Yeah. Um, and then there have been two other guys since then to go under 11 hours. So one guy went like 10 30, but again, he has quite a bit of usable site. And then one guy again with some usable site, he went like nine hours and 29 minutes or something like that. It, it was insane. Um, but what do you consider to be usable site? I just want to know that. Like, let's just get that out of the way. What's usable sure. site on a race? Uh, well, I mean, anything that, anything that you could see which is more than me, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got nothing here, broski. <laughs> uh, no, like you, like you can recognize shapes. Um, you can like get around, uh, on your own without really needing a cane. You can run on your own without like needing a guide. You can, um, like, I, I would say like, best corrected vision of like 2600 to 2200 um is, is kind of my my rule of thumb nice uh, man you you make me feel good about the way that i view myself which is i don't have that <laughs> <laughs> i would not be okay out on the open road <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, i mean i mean look so so the so the international blind sports federation actually yeah. has this um, what's our this, guideline <laughs> yeah it, there's actually this classification system that separates uh -huh. people into basically three categories of visual acuity yeah. um and so like you know it's separated into b1 b2 and b3 and like b1 are people that have no light perception um to light perception but they can't recognize a shape 
Mm -hmm. uh, like the shape of a hand at any distance. So like if you held your hand in front of your face, like what is this called? Not, that's that's uh, that's being known as a B1 or that's considered total blindness. I'm B1, dude. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, exactly. Um, and, and then like B, but then B2 has like, they, they have this certain range of visual acuity and then B3 uh -huh. would be, uh, you know, the, the least, the least impaired. So like that, can a that's one, can a B1 still see colors though? Um, I think it depends. Oh, so, so I think, I think it largely depends. Like, I, again, I'm not, I'm not super, super familiar with the classification think system familiar and all me. that. So, I mean, I gotta, I gotta be at least a little bit aware of yeah. it because I, I, uh, I compete in international sport. But, yeah, we uh, gotta, we gotta know who's the real one and who isn't. I get it. Uh, you know, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, but, but well, yeah. Dude, so, no, I, but you know, back to your original question, a triathlon is just, it's it's any event that combines swimming, cycling, and running in that order, in you know into one, into one race uh, or one one event. Uh, and you don't get like you don't get a rest time after you finish the water you got to hop right on that bike right correct so like you go straight from swimming into what's called your transition mm -hmm. uh, so transition one and that's where you use you know switch over to your cycling the the cycling leg of the of the race and then you go into transition two which is you go straight from cycling into running Wait. Uh, so this yeah. is interesting i've actually never thought about this what is the transition because you're obviously in like some form of a swimsuit or something so what and then you've got to put shoes on for but i've never thought of this walk me <laughs> through your walk me through your transition time yeah yeah so it's actually so transition time so transition times mm -hmm. can really vary depending on what kind of race you're doing or what's your goal uh so like in sprint triathlon at, at the you know at the at this international level like we like we do um like my transition one time can range from one minute all the way up to like a minute, 20 seconds or so. And does uh, that minute get removed from your actual time? Like, do you get, no, no, that, okay. that's included in your time. And do you get like, okay. Do you have like a locker room where you change or you just like strip down? So, so, uh, so what we, what we do is we actually wear one, we wear a triathlon kit. So we wear one thing that oh. we can swim bike and run in you're like you're uh, like lady gaga like performing you're just like getting ready for your next song yeah pretty much so uh so like in in the in the swim if the water uh, if the water is cold enough we're mm -hmm. allowed to wear a wetsuit okay. um so like when we come out of the water um we you know we run in our wetsuit and we strip our wetsuits off while we're running um, you like strip it down to like around your waist. And then once you Sounds get to so where dangerous, Oh, it's, it's incredible. It's insanely dangerous. Um, it's there's, there've been some epic failures. Do they practice. know that you can't see? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, yeah, dude. Um, but we got to do what we got to do. Um, true. so, true. but, uh, so, but yeah. And then when you get to where your bike is racked, um, you, uh -huh. finish, you finish stripping your wetsuit off of your off of your body and uh, uh -huh. in the internet on on the international racing circuit we have to throw anything that comes off of our body we have to throw into this little like laundry basket that they give us okay um otherwise it's considered abandonment of equipment and you get like a 10 second penalty um <laughs> and 10 seconds you know people are like it's everything and it's no when you're win when you when you're in a race yeah. that is you know seven you know at the end of the at the end of the race seven you know yeah. you're separated by seven seconds from second place yeah it's <laughs> 10 seconds is a lot yeah. um <clears throat> um so like so we throw like our our cap our goggles our wetsuit into the into these baskets and then so what we do is we actually clip our bike shoes into the pedals uh on the bike so that they're our, our shoes are already on the bike and nice. so we grab so we grab our helmets we we buckle our helmets on um, and then we unrack our bike and we run to the, the mount line and, uh, we like, we're, we're in bare feet. Um, uh, and we don't like most, most, um, people at this, at, you know, at this level of triathlon don't wear socks when okay. we race. Uh, so like when we get to the mount line, we jump, we literally jump onto the bike and we have our feet just resting on top of our cycling shoes. 
uh-huh. and we ride our bike until we get to a point where we can coast and actually put our feet into our shoes and strap them down. And then we actually can ride like all out and go really, really fast um, on the bike. And like, you know, the speeds that we're hitting on the bike are, you know, we average probably 28 miles an hour. That's fast. That's a fast average. 27, 28 miles an hour. And that's on a, and that's on a fairly technical bike course. Um, Mm -hmm. On some bike courses, like we raced on, um, we raced on, uh, uh, on this circuit in Abu Dhabi last year. And we're actually going to race there again this year at the world championships, um, where we were actually raced. The bike course was all on an F one track. That's um, really cool. So like the, like that one, we were holding like 31, 32 miles an hour. It was, it was fucking awesome. Kyle, uh, you're so- talking about insane speeds. And all I can think about is your bare <laughs> feet getting blisters. <laughs> Oh, dude, I, at the end of every race, I mean, if you don't have, a, I mean, it's, it's a rare occasion that you don't have a blister. Uh, so, but yeah, but you're coming off the bike. Then we, what we do is like, we, we literally unstrap our feet from our shoes and slide our feet out of our shoes. Yeah. And we slow the bike down just enough to where we can jump off the bike and we hit the ground running what? right next, right next to our bike. So we slow the bike down to probably like eight, nine maybe 10 miles an hour and then like you jump off the bike and like you just got to get your feet you got to get your legs moving and you run you can take um, your biking shoes off right yeah like you take your like you, you slide your feet out of your shoes and your shoes so you run still, you run barefoot uh run barefoot at least into in through transition and then when we get and then when we re-rack our bike and we throw our helmet into our our little laundry basket um then we pull on our, then we yank on our running shoes um socks so yank, or no socks no socks, bro. It's only five blistering K. speeds for blisters. Yeah. yeah, man. No, it's it's only 5k. So like, you know, you, you run for like 17, 18 minutes, um, mm-hmm. with, with no socks on. It's like, it's, it's really like, once you get used to it and you've done it a few times, it's, it's, it's really not that bad. No, I actually uh, love, I love being barefoot, but, um, no, I mean, if you're not used to it, you're a blister. Yeah, no, it, it, it no, it's, it sucks. Like the yeah. first few times you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, so that's, so that's how we, that's how we, that's how we do it. But like it, in an Ironman, um, it's a whole different ball game. Um, because you know, like a fast Ironman transition for me is like four minutes okay. <laughs> because, you know, like it, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot more going on in an Ironman and there's a lot bigger distances. And like, you know, sometimes in transition, I'll stop to pee, mm-hmm. um, for an Ironman or like it for an Ironman. Um, I do take the time and I put on socks for the run okay, um, okay. or like, you know, there, there's a lot of people in an Ironman, like a, a lot of people, like the, the, their goal of an Ironman is just to finish. Cause like just going that distance is such an incredible feat in and of itself. That would be um, me. It would be just get through this. No, dude, that was, yeah, dude, yeah. that was me for my, that was me for my first one. And then I, I got the bug. I was like, I want to go faster. Right. Uh, so then I started, you know, chipping away and trying to figure out, okay, how do I, how do I go faster? Um, so like my first Ironman, I did like a, like, I did a full change. Like they have these changing tents in Ironman where you, you can go in and you basically like strip down and like, you can put, you know, you get out of your, uh, swim clothes and in, like put on a, like a fresh dry cycling kit. And then you can, uh, and then when you come in from the bike, you can strip off that and you could put on like, you know, fresh, dry, clean running shorts and running socks and, you know, running tank top and all that. So like in an Ironman, they do have that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, but yeah, for like what, what, for what I'm racing right now for sprint triathlon, the goal is to go as fast as you possibly can. And, uh, yeah, we wear, we wear one, like, a it basically looks like a freaking leotard, uh, that we run in. So I, 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 like, it's really funny. Like if I go into like a, a massage clinic or a doctor's office or, uh, or like my dietitian or nutritionist is like doing some like skin full testing uh-huh. on me to you know, check my body fat or, or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. you might take your shirt off. I'm like, I freaking race in my underwear. <laughs> 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 I got no, I got no problem. <laughs> no, no shame here. Yeah. What, uh, 
what do you find your like what do you like to eat if you're doing a Ironman because I know that like for like a 15 or 10 hour race like people do like those like keto packs or like some kind of glucose intake or like what do you use for those um it depends you know it's it's evolved over the years mm-hmm. um so for my <laughs> my first iron man um i ate a payday candy bar every like hour <laughs> how'd you feel uh, <laughs> I was, I, I had to take a, I had to take a, had to drop a <laughs> transition too, man. but you know, it was fine after that. I was uh, constipated for days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, nah, dude, that was, that was freaking awesome. And then like, I, you know, drank a lot of like Gatorade and stuff. And then for my, uh, for my second Ironman, I, I did like a, uh, a cliff bar, uh, every hour and then every 30 minutes that I, I would alternate every 30 minutes doing either a, like a, a gel Mm-hmm. um so basically like pure sugar and glucose yeah. um uh, i would alternate doing a gel and a cliff bar so that i actually had so i actually had to eat and chew something and had slower digesting carbohydrates and and all that and then now for like when i race a sprint uh, you know but now if i was to race an iron man yeah. um i actually what i do is, is uh, you know it's well I use a, uh, I use a nutrition formula that basically I could get all of my calories, uh, just from drinking. Uh, really? yeah. So I, I, um, so it's, it's, it's not quite a, a ga- it's not a Gatorade. It's, it's a lot more, uh, it's custom blended to me. Um, and so I use, so I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually currently working out uh, the details of, of, uh, partnering with this, with this company, it's called infinite nutrition. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like, you know, and, and they, and they like, they're, they're a very well-known, uh, custom, uh, nutrition company, mm-hmm. um, in the, in the endurance sport world. Um, yeah. so we're, you know, we're just, we're just finalizing our, uh, our agreement to, to make me one of their athlete ambassadors, oh, uh, cool. for the 2022, uh, season. Uh, but yeah, so I basically what they did last year for me was they create, uh, we, I did a sweat analysis, oh, um, go and figure. they, and they, uh, and they took the data from my sweat test. Um, and like, they, they saw how much magnesium, sodium, like all these different elements that I sweat. Yeah. Um, they took that and create, and then based on my body weight, based on, um, like, you know, my caloric needs over the course of, you know, an, a one hour of exercise or, you know, one hour of racing or one hour of training, they created this custom blend formula uh, wow. for me. Um, and then what I can do is I can go online and I can, you know, adjust that formula, um, you know, whenever I, I need to change something up. So say, I like, say I, I start doing a lot more bike rides that are of the four hour, you know, mm-hmm. four plus hour variety, uh, I would go and create, I, I would go and add in protein to my, uh, to my blend, um, or say I need a race day nutrition blend, um, where I don't want protein, uh, and I just want just straight up, car- you know, straight up carbohydrates, but I also want caffeine. Um, and so then I, I, I go and I, I, you know, I, I add in caffeine to that blend and they, they send me a, they send me a, a bag and, um, and all that. Like it gets, it gets pretty sciencey and pretty nerdy. Um, That's okay. but, uh, but yeah, so like, so, um, so like if I was to race an Ironman now, I would actually, what I would do is I would, I would estimate how many bottles of infinite I would need on the bike. Um, and I would pack those bottles full of, of infinite. Um, and I, I would, so say it would probably take me, you know, an Ironman bike ride would probably be like four and a half, four and a half hours for me, um, depending on the course of four and a half to five hours. So probably four to five bottles. Um, and I would, I would put enough bottle cages on my bike to hold those bottles. And I would just drink one, I would make sure to drink one bottle of infinite per hour. Um, and then, um, I would have a bottle, um, I would have like a, a bottle of infinite, uh, in my transition to supply stash. And then I have, I would have a, 
bottle of infinite stashed in my um, drop bag that I can pick up halfway through the halfway through the marathon um, that's to, awesome. uh, to replenish it. So, yeah. yeah so, uh, so that, that's, that's what I would do uh, just for, for pure, uh, for pure speed and simplicity. Cause you know, simple, um, you know, simplicity is, is the, is the key ingredient when it comes to um, triathlon. If you, if you keep it super simple, then you're yeah. going to, you're going to be successful. So, well, I'm glad these, uh, these guys and gals at infinite think you're as amazing as I do. And they're studying your sweat the way that I, uh, I always knew that we, uh, we belong to be studied here at Blind Sweaters. <laughs> Exactly, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now I just need to convince them to uh, give us some like advertising dollars or something for, for, uh, for, for, you know, you know, be a uh, blind sweaters uh, or just some more baby bottle formula. So we can, uh... <laughs> that too. I'm, I'm down, I'm down with that. <laughs> We're just big babies and we need bottles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. hundred percent, hundred percent. But yeah, no, that's uh yeah, man. That's, do you take that's, a do you take like Saturday off, or do you uh, do you do something uh, physical as well, or do you stretch? What do you do on the weekends? Oh, I, I still have I still train on the weekends. So like today, I, I'll uh, I have a five mile run that I got to get done, and a two hour bike uh, with some uh, with some efforts on the on the bike. So like when when you and I are done yeah. chatting here, I'll go uh, I'll go throw on my uh, my run gear and. Um, uh, go down and uh, hit the treadmill for an easy five miles just to loosen the legs up. And then, um, I'll wait and then I'll go, uh, eat some lunch and then, uh, probably about, I don't know, three, four, you know, probably about two, three o'clock this afternoon, I'll go down and, uh, knock out my, uh, knock out my bike ride. Um, I've got, I think today I've got like two hours, uh, I got like a 20 minute warm up, and then I have six by 10 minutes at just below race power. Um, so like, so on, on, like, I think I've told you before on the bike, we, uh, we measure our output on the bike in terms of, of power. Uh, yeah. so in terms of Watts, um, yeah. um, so uh, like during a race, we, we have a certain amount of Watts that we want to produce an average. So, um, so today, uh, I think I'm, I'm doing six by 10 minutes at just below that, that average, uh, that I would want to hold for uh, for a certain amount of time. So do six by six by 10 minutes. And then I'll get to two minutes of easy, easy spinning in between each of those efforts. So we had a, we had a deload week last week at my gym. And uh -huh. that is not for me. As I was explaining <laughs> to my trainer, I was like, dude, there's, there's a certain reasons why some people work out and there's other reasons why other people work out and me coming in here for five days last week. And like, just doing some like light work to recover for like what, you know, getting into like a hypertrophy phase. I'm like, that's yeah. not for me, <laughs> well, like, I mean, but, but, but here's, here's the thing. Like I always, I always kind of said the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but like, as you grow as a, you know, as a weightlifter or as a, you know, you, you like everyone wants to improve and the way you improve is by going in cycles. So like, uh, you know, like a three week, you know, three weeks of, of building up, building up, getting, you know, going heavier, longer, stronger, and then like you decrease because your, your, your body and your muscles and your mind need, need that to repair. Um, and then you come back the next week and start that next build phase. And it actually does make you stronger. stronger. Yeah, dude, that's beautiful. Not scientific and all, but I work out every day to beat the demons out of myself every single day. And if I'm yeah, not I getting that. that, if I'm not getting that, if we're deloading, I'm like, Hey man, the rest of my day is suffering. That's what's going I, on. I get you. I, <laughs> I, I get you, man. Just get, so it's, it sounds like to me, what you really need is triathlon. Yeah. Dude, you're um, probably oh, Kyle hearing you talk about it is very exciting for me yeah like dude, that it's 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 literally <laughs> I, like i i dude i loved wrestling yeah uh but like triathlon is i mean dude you want to talk about a yeah no what you're talking it, yeah it, it can it can be so mm -hmm. it can be so brutal it can be so scientific it can be yeah. so exhilarating and soul crushing and yeah. incredible and amazing um, I, I love, I love it. It's, it's, it's a, I mean, dude, like I, I I've, I've made the, I've actually done a, I've done a couple of, uh, videos on, on my YouTube channel where I compare 
triathlon to music um like you know really explaining like look like here's some of the here's some of the things like you know why do we like i mean sure there there's a handful of people um uh, that like they don't warm up like they don't warm up before they go on stage they just go oh. and start shredding but you know if you think back on it like some of your best performances probably came uh on stage when you like when your fingers were nice and limber and you were and like you were just in the flow and in the groove mm-hmm. uh, and you know from a, from a nice warm up you know and you had this routine and and all this kind of stuff. so there there's all kinds of of different things and then you know and then putting together a, a great triathlon race mm-hmm. is very much like putting together a great show. musical composition or or yeah. a great show mm-hmm. um like you have you know you have your build up you don't want you don't want your cres- you don't want your okay yeah. crescendo to be in the swim you want it you're to like, be you want the fireworks to be right there at the end you're you like know, writing you want- a solo and you're like yeah, yeah you're you're yeah you're cuz you're you're setting a pace yeah exactly uh so it, it's very you know it's it's actually really it's really cool and that and uh, you know i i i love it um and then i and then so one of the things i also do is i like, i'll i'll uh I occasionally, you know, do some talks and, and, and stuff to, you know, to companies and organizations mm-hmm. and, and triathlon is very applicable to those groups. And the, you know, so like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of dipping my toe into the financial sector of mm-hmm. the, of the world where I'm, I'm going to hopefully, uh, start, you know, going, you know, doing some, uh, doing some zoom talks and doing some, um, doing some corporate visits to, um, like financial, excuse me, uh, financial firms and, and stuff and, and talking to um, like financial advisors and business owners and business leaders about how triathlon is applicable to the business world. Um, and, and so, the, yeah, it's, 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 there's so many applications to it, just like there are so many applications. I mean, if you, if you think on it, like if you broke it down, there are so many applications to like what, like there's, there's no difference between what you do as a musician and what I do as a triathlete. Uh, it's just the, it's just the medium in which we choose to ply our craft. How would someone who's blind, who is excited about everything that you just said, uh, take that leap into doing a triathlon or to doing, a like an Ironman or a half Ironman or like, how would, how would they go find a guide? How would they find a race? How would they, you know, without having the, the training center behind them, like how, how would uh, one enter this world? Oh man, we could do a whole episode on that. Yeah, I, thought, <laughs> I, I, I really, I thought so. Like while you were just like having that like rant, I was like, man, how would like, how would I reach out to somebody in Orlando and have like the trust in them that they've done this before, like all of that and be like, all right, let's go try it. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, and, and, and look, dude, I got my start in triathlon right there in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. Oh, I know that. I know there's a chance. I could probably put you in touch with some people that, that are, are still there. Uh, um, I want, I want you to be my guide. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go the wrong direction. I'm... <laughs> hey man, I'm no, I'm no stranger to going the I wrong can, direction. I, I can, I can lead you the right direction in terms of uh, the philosophical way. Maybe. That's all I need, man. That's that's what I'm all but in, about. But in terms of if we go the actual right direction on the course, uh, you're on your own there, buddy. All <laughs> roads lead to Rome. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, no, so so the base, basically what what I did. So there's um there are webs there there is a website um, out there now um, that some of my uh, some of my uh, friends and colleagues have have built over the over the years. Um, mm-hmm. It's called UnitedInStride.com, and it it part it go in and you plug in your zip code and you can search your area. You can search up to like 50 miles, uh, mm-hmm. like a 50 mile radius and see who has signed up in your area to be a guide. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can, you can do that um, to find people to run with people to bike with. Um, you can, you know, a lot of, you know, there are sometimes triathletes sign up on there. Um, I, I, that's basically what I did. And I, yeah emailed one of the people that was on there and um and 
he happened to, well, I, I, there were two people in the Orlando area at the time that I did it. This was back in like 2014 and one of them responded. Um, and so I was, I was kind of like, I was like, uh, well, beggars can't be choosers. So, sure. um, so I, I met up with him and, and he and I became really fast friends and, and he was a triathlete and he was the one that actually convinced me, um, to, to give triathlon a go. And he was part of a triathlon club in Orlando, mm-hmm. the, the central Florida triathlon club. And so, uh, I started training with, with them and, you know, we had like group workouts and stuff. So, um, so yeah, you like, you can, you know, contact your local, like you can do a Google, like the internet's an amazing thing, man. You could just do a Google. I haven't search. heard of it. <laughs> yeah. Me neither. Um, <laughs> you could just do this. You can do a search for like, um, running group, uh, okay. on, on, you know, in your area or triathlon club or, um, anything like that. And then you just, like, you just reach out like, and, and just be like, Hey, this is, this is me. This is who I am. Um, and this is kind of what I, I'd like to, I'd like to give the, give this running thing a try or give this triathlon thing a go. Um, you know, would you guys be willing to, to, to help me out or like, would you be open to it? Um, so yeah, I actually, <laughs> it's, that's one of the things I, it's one of the things I, I teach in my, uh, in my, um, in my talks and stuff. So like if I'm presenting to, um, if I'm presenting to a group of salespeople, mm-hmm. um, prospecting for a triathlon guide or a running guide is no different than prospecting for, um, you know, someone, you know, someone that you are trying to, to sell something to. So right. like, you know, say you're, so say you're going out and you're like, I mean, I need to, I need to market, uh, I need to sell, um, I need to sell this, this music, or I need to sell myself as a guitarist to, mm-hmm. Uh, this, this producer or that producer or whatever, uh, it, the, you know, the, the sales techniques and stuff that, that you use are, are no different than, you know, to find those prospects um, than it is to, to find, you know, triathlon guides and running guides and all that. So, uh, but really it's all about just making, making as many connections as you possibly can. So making as many friends as you can and uh, not being a dick to people. Um, uh, yeah, that's the, I'm screwed. That, yeah, pretty much it. I thought I was too. So I had to, I had to learn the, I had to learn the hard way. I was like, Oh man, I can't actually guy's an dick. asshole. I can't, I can't be a dick. Like, so. um, <laughs> yeah. It's when you can't see, it's hard to be a dick, man. It, it uh, I mean, nobody there, wants to help you. There, there are people out there that, uh, <laughs> that that still managed to be a dick even though they can't <laughs> and, and look definitely occasionally uh, on occasion like if i'm having a if i'm having an off day i am 100 a dick man like uh, i i fully admit to it but my 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 goal in life is always just to try and be better than i that i that i was the previous day i try to not be uh hard to be around for my loved ones that's that is exactly that's tough man we, we yeah. can definitely be a challenge that's for yep. sure and oh, I say for the, sure i say the we about myself <laughs> oh 100 yeah so it's actually funny we um so one of our uh so we, we've got this like list of team values uh for at, at the at the training center with my paratriathlon teammates and uh rule number three is don't be a dick uh-huh. So <laughs> it's, it <laughs> plays right into that. So yeah, our, our main, our main rules are, you know, they actually funnily enough, they spell out the little, the, I can't talk anymore. The letters yeah. TLDR. I'll let you go, buddy. <laughs> TLDR. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, we, uh, we believe in tough love. Uh, we believe every day you got to live, laugh and love. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't be a dick. And then uh, the R is really try hard not to suck. <laughs> so, I, I like, I actually respect all of those a lot yeah no so so those are our those are our travel our, our travel on resident team values uh so yeah. dude I, I really would love to talk a lot more about this and just because i i would i mean i, I don't want to say like hey i'm gonna go for one because you know until you actually commit to something it's it's you know you don't want to look like a the it's town a cha- idiot it's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a challenge man and you i mean we got it here uh, you know, and again, I don't think I can what, do like 10 of these with you without at least like dipping my toe into the water with it. You know? I mean, dude, you, uh, like there's, there's a reason it's called triathlon. It's the TR- trying. <laughs> the, the, the TRI does not stand for the letter number three of swim, bike and run. I just, it's, yeah, it for, stands for 
just give it a try, man. Just give Dude, it a try. I, I'm going to because I just know that I'm going to make for a really entertaining episode when I come and tell you how how just nuts you are. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm I'm so stoked for this. I'm so stoked like, for this. I can't, like that's really can't my wait. sole I can't reason. Wait. I can't wait. I can't. Uh, like David has got to get some video footage of you just yeah. like in the quitting. Pool I want I want and... footage of me quitting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I want footage God. of me face down on pavement, just going, Kyle's fucking crazy. Kyle's <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be like, I want David Goggins number right now and tell him he's an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Uh, dude, Go- Goggins is a triathlete, man. Dude, I know you guys are all nuts. <laughs> could you, could you oh, dude, I've actually, I've actually thought about like shooting him a message and like, you should, like, man. Yo, dude, we should do a triathlon together. Just like that would be just dude, insane, dude. You really should. I mean, he stays hard, you stay hard, so why not? Uh, it, could, it could be entertaining. <laughs> it could be entertaining. So I'll be the middle man. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Um, hey, dude, I do want to ask you this final question. Yeah, yeah. Because I think this is very important. When I when I imagine myself doing what you're talking about, I I um I get a little held up on this one one thing that I suffer with, and I want to know if you go through this. Do you have do you get shin splints? Um <laughs> I have in the past. Yeah. Um a lot of like shin splints is is a lot a lot of what that stems from is bad form bad form yeah um it's and not using it not use it's, like it's, not utilizing running right yeah not utilizing running um uh, mm-hmm. a lot of that has to do with the type of shoes you're wearing um mm-hmm. like the footwear um uh, and then just being being consistent um yeah so and, and then like knowing when is the right time to run and when is the right time to walk yeah. Um, all that kind of stuff. And, and, and look, like when I was, when I was just getting started out, like, I mean, everything, well, that, that really hasn't, changed. everything still hurts. <laughs> uh, but like, you know, you're able to, um, like I, I, I haven't gotten shin splints in, in a long, in a long time. We, um, we don't run a lot. We just do like a lot of like CrossFit type of like functional training. Sure. And then like every once in a while, like on Friday, it's like, you're, you know, you'll be doing these like like squat presses and then in between that it's like run the turf six times back and forth and i swear to you just because it's like been three months since i've done that i wake up the next day and i'm like oh my god my dad gave me these horrible genetic shins and he suffered from shin splints and now i'm suffering with shin splints yeah i mean so some of that could be genetics but most most of it is I, I would I would argue that most of that is like if you Bad don't form. do something if you don't do something for three months like if I mean yeah. dude imagine like if you didn't like I mean guitar is your thing um, but if you if you uh, like and just music like if you didn't um, pick up a guitar for three months dude um, I get better when I don't pick it up I'm telling you it's so different I, than the shin splints. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. All right. Let's, let's, let's say you, let's say you don't pick up a pair of drums. St- like let's say you don't pick up yeah. a pair of drumsticks for 10 years. Like I haven't picked up a pair of drumsticks in probably 10 years. Actually, probably you would shred harder. Music, music, is in, <laughs> no, like, music is in your my soul. Timing, my timing would be my timing. and My technique would be a little off. My paradiddle, my paradiddles, my five stroke roll, my seven stroke roll. It, it wouldn't quite be as crisp as it, as it used to be. And so that's, that's kind of, similar like if you if you don't do some like the more you practice yeah um and the more you practice with intention mm-hmm. uh, when you're consistent with with something um you will you will improve um so like if you if you obviously if you like if 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 we were to you know teach someone how to you know play guitar and like we only taught them how to how to down pick and then you know expected them to be a, a master at alternate picking um you know six months down the road like they're not going to be a master at alternate picking um you got you have to practice that alternate picking with intention before you become you know before you become uh you know before you can alternate pick um you know at, at the speeds like that that you do dude you uh, had some fast alternate picking in that last video you sent me i in oh, your solos you. you were like like you were just doing like this like really 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 fast scale run and i was i had never heard you shred like that oh 
Oh, thank you. I, I, no, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's something that, well, I mean, dude, like I, I, I like, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've spent so many years like listening to you just like being able to sweep across the, no, but it was like, prep board. okay. Okay. But I'm talking to you about doing like my first triathlon or like attempting anything like this. And then it's like, Kyle, there's literally <laughs> nothing that you can't do really really well because then i'm like oh he also does he does guitar he does this looper he does this cover but then you go into a solo and it's like dude there's there's no boundaries on you <laughs> <laughs> there are zero boundaries on kyle well well i mean dude that that's the reason why my book is titled discovering a life without limits because that's that's <laughs> what that's what we do man all, all we, do is we we try to find the limits and then we try to push those limits beyond and dude i'm just yeah. trying to take that bradley cooper limitless pill i'm not trying to figure it out <laughs> the hard it's, way good screw that the only way is the hard way <laughs> i'm not trying to do it the hard way <laughs> so yeah Dude, that's, no it was really like hearing you do that uh junkie rush cover was actually really really exciting and I, I just was like oh man there's nothing this guy can't uh just get better at it was really cool uh, um, but but dude again that's that's in that's practicing with intention and and purpose uh well not a lot of people do that a lot of people uh play a lot of people just yeah. uh you know, and there's nothing, and there's nothing wrong with that, especially when it comes, especially when it comes to music and, and, there, and look, man, the, the, the same thing happens in triathlon. Like, yeah, no, there's, there's nothing, people who there's, just clock in, you know, there's not, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. Like I have a, I have a friend, she, she's like the first female to do over a hundred Ironman distance triathlons in her, in her life. And she doesn't train. She just goes out and does them. And she's like, I don't care if I finish in 12 hours or 17 hours like she'll stop and like pet like people will be like walking their dogs and like you know she's you know in the middle of a race and she stopped and like plays with the dog for five minutes while she's running you know uh that would be me yeah it's like there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that it's it's all about finding our fulfillment and our purpose like for 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 me i i get a lot of enjoyment in pursuing you know per pursuing this idea of perfection but what i'm really seeking is excellence yeah um, I, I like and, that and proficiency so i like, like that a lot yeah and dude when i when i was young man I, I was on a travel ice hockey team like i i loved competitive sports but running was always my kryptonite like as a kid like even in like pe like when we do our our physical fitness like presidential fitness yeah. test or whatever oh like when we God. would do the mile run Ali and I, who were like traveling hockey, uh, like teammates, we would literally get to the halfway mark and sit behind the soccer goal and then just like walk the rest of the way. And they'd be like, Jared, Ali, 15 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like running a mile was not what I was. Um, oh, dude, was that, that dude, that was that was, dude. But, that, but here's the thing. That was me. Like I was like, I, I like I was that. Like I was supposed to be this incredible athlete mm -hmm. uh, in in elementary school and, and yeah. middle school and stuff because I was at the time I was competitively rock climbing and all that, uh -huh. uh, and I was like you know traveling around the world and like doing these hikes and like you know yeah. mountaineering adventures and stuff. And I was supposed to be this incredibly athletic kid, but when it came to the presidential fitness test, right? You know, you know, it would take me fifteen minutes to run the mile. And like, and I don't mean I would run it and then, you know, walk the rest. I actually tried to run and it <laughs> was taking me 15 minutes to run the mile. Or like I did, like I would do the shuttle. Like, you remember that little shuttle run? Yes. Like, the shuttle run and then the pull-up challenge and then the yeah, touching like, your toes thing. It's like, I can't yeah. do a single pull-up. I can't touch my toes, but I was super athletic, but I just wasn't, um, I wasn't fit. Like you could like, there'd be like a, a swimmer who was on like the swimming team and he's repping out like 25 pull-ups next to me. Yeah. And I was like, huh? Like I, I literally couldn't pull myself up once. Yeah. No, say, I mean, dude, same. Like I could barely get, I, I don't think I could get a pull-up at all. Um, and, and then like, you know, the, like the shuttle run, like kids were doing it in like 10, like may like six to seven seconds. I was taking like 30 seconds to do it, man. Like it was bad. <laughs> like, so like, I, I didn't show off like, like in all these tests and stuff, I did not show athleticism. Right. Um, and like, and so when I got into, uh, and like, you know, then when I got into high school, like I, like I, 
you know, eventually I did find cycling and I, like I, I rode my bike, I, you know, rode the tandem a lot with my dad. I, I wound up getting on the, the stationary bike and rode that a bunch. Um, so I got cardio in that way, uh, but I still just, I could not run to save my life. Um, and, you know, and then, you know, wrestling helped with, you know, being athletic and all that, and that, but then when I eventually did get into running, I was terrible at it, dude. Like I, like people, people laugh. Like I, my first Ironman, I ran the first mile. My first mile took, I think 13 minutes. I walked the next 25 miles and then ran the last quarter mile. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like oh, I, it, like, like it, it was, it was that bad for me, man. And, and now I run a 5k in under 18 minutes. So, you know, like it, it's so I, it's, it's intentional. It, it's, it's intentionality. It's a, a willingness to do simple things really well. Um, yeah. And it's this willingness to, to strive for improvement if that's what you choose to do. My first uh, 5k was a turkey trot on Thanksgiving with my mom hey, and hey, my hey. sister when I was like eight or nine. Love and those. Yeah. And I was just a great ice hockey player, great on skates, great on the ice. But <laughs> I think my 5k was like 26 minutes. <laughs> Better than my first 5k, bro. All right. All right. Yeah. But I could dude. I had like 20, 20 vision too at this time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was, I was pathetic. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure my first five, my first 5k road race that I did that was open was like 30 minutes or something like that. It was, yeah. It was <laughs> it was I don't know. I, um, I, I, I do long for improvement of any, anything that I, that I chip away at. So I would yeah. like to, I'd like to well, be a better runner. I'd like to be, I had a, I have a lake right behind my house that I, um, I started walking my dog around it, like by myself. And I was like, you know what? I could run this by myself. Yeah. And so I started doing that and I was doing it every morning, like at four 30 in the morning. And next thing, you know, those, um, those pay for bike rides with your app things started showing up and people were leaving their bikes, just random bikes, like, in the middle of the road and that's not nice <laughs> yeah that's not that's not cool man like hey people don't you know a blind guy runs this route yeah Come yeah on. don't you know a blind guy runs this like every morning at 4 30 <laughs> on, like pay attention no the ducks were aware <laughs> yeah seriously i mean they're they're they, they're perfectly happy to help you out here man <laughs> but no um, man it, it's 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 like i said it's it's one of those things like look even though you are like you're not going to call yourself an expert guitarist, but no. like you're still you're still striving to, you know, to to improve in guitar. I'm still striving to improve in triathlon, and like, and I think if there's any lesson to be gleaned from from this little discussion, it's it's look, we, you know, we all have to, you know, we all find a passion, we all pursue it to, you know, the best of, of our extent and our knowledge, and you know. And I'm getting way too philosophical here now. So no, uh... dude, it, it's good stuff though. And you're dude, you're a you're a very inspiring dude. And honestly, like I I find joy in just like we're talking about being really the, being the better best versions of ourselves. And 100%. that's that's really all we're talking about here. And for me, it's like, is it about guitar? Is it about triathlon? Or is it just about like everything you can bring to the table for you know your your girlfriend your mom your yep. dad like your 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 friends like your coaches yep. like literally everything like just for them to say you know at the end of the day i'm proud of kyle kyle's doing well today kyle's having a good day kyle's putting love out into the universe he's grateful exactly. for the the good the good in a day and i i know exactly. that's also philosophical but i i'm honestly what is more important than that and 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 really what's more important than relationships exactly well i mean it's just like going back to going back to what i said like if you want to find if you want to get into triathlon it's all about building relationships that's all that's all triathlon is, is it's really just not about. being a dick <laughs> yeah well, i mean that, i mean at the end of the day man wouldn't you say that's all me that's all music has been for you is is finding those right relationships and when you find those right relationships you know man you make some sweet music you know, yeah, man, uh, musicians are tougher than athletes to work with. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, it, it can be some, it's, uh, once you get to a certain, I, I think in any profession, whether uh -huh. it be the music profession or the, the triathlon profession or the athletic profession, once you get to a certain level, there's, there's so much ego involved mm -hmm. that it, it does like there's, it's hard, man. It's, it's hard. Um, yeah, it's it's a challenge. We so. got to diminish the ego, Kyle. 
Exactly. <laughs> Keep the ego in check. That's what I got you for, right? Actually, that's what I got my girl. That's what I really got my girlfriend for. She, <laughs> she makes sure to bring the knocks the ego down up like a zillion pegs every every once in a while. She's really good hey. at, at keeping me humble. She sounds awesome from yeah. the from the little like, stuff you've told me. So I'm like, I'm like, babe, I'm amazing. I'm the best in the world. And then she brings out her silver medal from the Paralympics. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, look at she's like, look at this guy. <laughs> no. No, no, I, I, I kid because I care. She is actually, she is, she's so incredibly humble. She's four time Paralympian and just a, just incre an incredible athlete. So, you know, and, and just even better, even better human being. So just like, I, I'm sure, I mean, well, I know, I haven't met Emily, but I know Emily is, you know, Dude, she's like a how. nine time parallel. <laughs> I don't know. How, I don't know. Emily's, how, Emily's like I don't a know how she got, world. I don't know how you, I don't know how she got saddled with your sorry ass. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, I don't know how Jess got saddled with my sorry ass. <laughs> so. Dude, Emily went out last night with some friends till two in the morning last night. And Ooh. I was like, who, I was like, who do you think you are? Have like, fun, girl. No, I was like, I, I literally told her, I was like, you're just trying to like convince me that you have all these friends. So we have to have a wedding where you have like, like, like people in your wedding party. And I have like people in mind. I'm like, I get what you're trying to pull here. It's yeah, not, you're not yeah. fooling anyone. Yeah. Where, where she, where'd she go? She go down to the smoky tankerays. Is tank Dude, that, <laughs> Kyle, that is a, dude, I have a, I have a story. I'm oh, not actually, God. I'm not even, a, I'm not even allowed in there. Oh, dude. Seriously. Um, well, it's not like that official, but it is in my head. Yeah. Um, I have a story. <sighs> oh, this is a dark story, Kyle, oh, but dude. it is, it, it is a tanker story. And, um, so no, it's about eight years ago. <laughs> I was, I was, yeah, this is a long time ago. This could be like 10 years ago. I don't even know, but I was in Orlando visiting from California Yep. And there was, uh, we were just downtown, like a bunch of my friends were downtown and I hadn't like gone to downtown Orlando, like being 21, probably forever. And like, definitely from like visiting home from California. Yeah. And we started off at Tanqueray's and there was like uh, a really good, like live band playing. Uh, oh, yeah. I actually knew some of the people playing and, and then we went to, uh, we went to some other place, did some tequila shots. I mean, I really, I don't even know everything that happened this night, but there was a really good amount of drinking and a good amount of like just venturing around and seeing a bunch of friends. And next thing you know, we're about to leave. And I'm like, I don't have my debit card. Uh oh. <laughs> debit card was back at the first location at Tanqueray's. Oh, no. And we, so you, you know, tank race is like a, it's a downstairs. Oh, place. Gotta, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Been, been there a handful of times. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> walking back, um, I don't I think it was with like Ali, uh, Lucy. I was with, uh, Dave. I don't even remember who was the crew at this point, but we get to like, uh, the doorman or the, yeah, the, the body, uh, the, the bouncer the yeah bouncer the bodyguard um and he's like checking ids it may have been my id that was left there uh, but i stepped on his foot uh-oh <laughs> uh-oh <laughs> it was much like kicking my bed <laughs> i just didn't know it was there yeah <laughs> All I wanted to do was walk down these stairs and go get my shit. <laughs> yeah. And he puts his hand on my chest and he's like, whoa, 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 not you. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, that was a mistake on his part. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was like, dude, it was really bad. Like, Oh, it, it, no, got, it, it got so bad because like i mean i went into the whole like i don't you know I, i'm blind i don't know where your foot is like i mean it went yeah. it went south so oh, south God. to the, i mean there was like there were some cops like a few like probably 10 feet away that heard what was going on and uh, they approached the situation and i literally like i went into full like lawyer mode i turned on to the cops and i like literally said Excuse me, sirs. I would like to explain to you guys what's going on right now. I'm just trying to go downstairs and get my debit card. I stepped on this man's foot. I can't see his foot. <laughs> and, and he's now not letting me go get my car. <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. I wanted, 
<laughs> I wanted to, um, uh, this was back in my anger days. I yeah. wanted to start a whole line of merch shirts that would be, uh, I wanted to like pass them, uh, pass them around to like everybody who parties downtown. And it was oh, like, step on John's foot or something. Oh and I just God. wanted to promote everybody to go to Tanqueray's and just to like walk past this guy oh, and just go dude. boom and just step on, like, <laughs> slam on his foot. Oh my, oh my God, dude. dude yeah. Dude. Yeah. And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been back. I have not been back since, but um, it was not one of my uh most pleasant moments. Like I, I just yeah. couldn't. It, I don't know. It, it just uh, it beat me. If if uh, I, can I go you. back to that moment, it it really beat me. And like I can, yeah. I know for a fact that like if I was like, if I was in that situation now, like it would not be that the same as it was then. Like I was just, yeah. you know, I was I was younger. I wasn't as uh, good with my situation. <laughs> oh, for sure, for but, sure. But um, dude, stepping on that guy's foot and have him like just single me out as the drunk person i was like dude no no <laughs> yeah no there, there have definitely been times where i have you know not consumed a single drop of alcohol yet and like bouncers are like you're drunk i'm like no i i <laughs> dude i used to get um i used to sit at i used to sit at blackjack tables in vegas i love to play uh i love to play a good game of cards and um dude they would uh i've, I've had dealers accuse me of being on acid like literally being like, you need to leave this table. You're on like, I'm like, no, no, <laughs> literally. I just, I'm like, just let me know what my card is. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I'm like, you can take my money. I don't care. Just <laughs> I'm just here for a good time. People I'm just here for a good time. <laughs> oh man. Oh, oh man. And oh. how about brushing your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! That's <laughs> oh, oh, Kyle, Kyle, I love you, man. This was uh, fun always again. fun. Always yeah, fun, dude. man. Let's. Uh, I, I say let's do it again sometime. What do you say? <laughs> we'll get a good sweat in. You hear? <laughs> exactly. I like it, man. I like it. All right, man. Have uh, a good rest of your day, dude. You have a great rest of your day. It's your week, uh folks member hit that uh hit that like and subscribe button yeah. uh, follow, follow us on follow us both on youtube share give a, blind yeah, give a good, to all give your a friends. good share give a good yeah. share Sh share us out let us uh and let us know what you what you guys think and uh you know if you if you feel like uh chiming in um i'm, I'm totally down with uh people shooting in some some questions to the show, whether you uh, shoot it to us over on Instagram, you, you can hit me up uh, at iron Kyle, uh, or you can email me Kyle at Kyle or, you know, Jared at, at the blind people watcher. Probably uh, just uh, right? email Kyle. He seems to be way more together than I am. So just hit him <laughs> up. <laughs> could do that too. That's one uh, thing I've gathered from three episodes. <laughs> this guy's got it all figured out. So yeah, so hit us, so hit us up with some questions, and uh, I could I could present them to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gerard uh, Hera, and uh, we can uh, we can uh, have some fun with uh, some some fan questions. So yeah, I would, I would us, like that. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to come on the show, if don't be a stranger, we'd also have guests on. If you want to be, uh, yeah, we're uh, I think we're I think we're uh, thinking about lining up a couple of guests here in some upcoming shows. Uh, so we, uh, we might bring on a third, might bring us on a third wheel here pretty soon. So. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be the instant third wheel as soon as we have a third wheel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, broski. All right, later. Take dude. it easy. Later. Voice over. Uh, Leave meeting button.